Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Millions of families suffer every year. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if this is the first time seeing my face. Hello, my name is JC. I like to do story times on this channel, and today I'm gonna give you a story about how my father and myself got our identities stolen. So it's kind of like a cautionary tale to monitor your email addresses, your phone numbers, otherwise you might be left with a hefty credit card bill. So if you like story times like this, or just like hanging out with me, you know, come back and see what other I'm other stuff I'm chit-chatting about because I talk too much. Um, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe so you can come hang out with us in the future. But enough of the jibber-jabber, let's get started on this story. So this story, I need to kind of preface by saying that my parents aren't the most technologically savvy, as I'm sure a lot of parents aren't. You know, I've had to help them set up, you know, different kind of accounts, email addresses, credit card bills. And in doing so, I have always set up myself as either their recovery email addresses or their recovery phone numbers. So that's kind of important to note because this story starts several years ago where I am living at home, I am upstairs in my bedroom, click clacking away on my laptop, and I receive an email from AOL.com. And the email said that my mother had changed her email address password and I was the recovery email. So they were just like, just making sure that's cool. Now that should be red flag number one that my parents use AOL because who uses AOL anymore? But to their credit, they've had it since the dawn of the internet. So like since the 90s. So we'll, we'll, we'll forgive them there because they're very much creatures of habit that they know that email system well enough. They're not gonna get a new email and tell other people about it. So AOL it was. And I have problems with AOL, mainly with their security. You know, I've tried logging into my own Gmail on my mom's iPad. And because it's a new device, you know, I get a text message. I get a message to my regular email, a message to my recovery email, a MySpace direct message, a telegram pigeon, a guy knocking down my door being like, somebody's trying to log in, who is it? It's just me, it's just me. I'm just, I'm on a new device, it's my mom's, it's just me. Oh, all right, carry on. <laughs> or, some, or something like that, you know? So I prefer Gmail because it just has a lot of security and AOL does not. And I think this story perfectly exemplifies that. So I'm upstairs in my room, I get this email that my mom changed her password and I know right away that my mom doesn't know how to do that. <laughs> so it's midnight at this point and my mom works the night shift so she's a night owl so we're both up. So I kind of tiptoe out of my bedroom. I open the door and I whisper to her, I was like, mom, did you change your email password? And she was like, no, how do I do that? And I was like, ah, oh, crap. I think you just got hacked. So I head downstairs and she's watching like Jimmy Fallon or something and I was like, can you pause that real quick? I need you to log in to your email. So she tries logging in and it says incorrect password. And I was like, yep, somebody, somebody just changed your password. Don't worry, I'm a tech wizard. I know how to fix this. Forgot password. <laughs> now again, because I have set myself up to be the recovery email, I received all of the following information. So to my own email, it said, this email is trying to reset this password, like here's how to do it. So I reset her password, everything is kosher. I remember that from the last video. <laughs> we were kosher. And I get an email saying like, You're, you have successfully changed your password, good job. And I was like, all right, mom, here you go. I fixed it for you. Give her back her iPad. I start to head upstairs when I get another email saying, you have once again successfully changed your password. And that's when I realized, oh shoot, somebody is changing her password in real time. Somebody is hacking her email. I gotta fix this. So I grab her iPad back and I do the same process, change her password. I kind of wait a minute. Sure enough, they changed the password again. And what ensues is literally the most exciting 60 minutes of my life because I felt like I was a nerd in some superhero movie hacking my way to save the world. Like it was literally like my mom's like, oh no, somebody's hacking the mainframe. Move over, I gotta override the system. Oh no, he's trying to get in. I got it, we're in. <laughs> 
<laughs> so stupid. But that's how I felt because literally for the next hour, I was just going back and forth with this person, changing our passwords. Now what's interesting that happened is that after a few times, I would go to change my password and it would say, okay, what recovery email do you want us to send it to? JC blah, blah, blah at gmail.com or yogurt lover 264 at Yahoo. And that's when I realized, oh shoot, not only are they just changing the password, they're trying to change all of the recovery information so they can kind of take full control of the account. So everything I was doing was literally just a matter of speed in the fact that I would try to get there before them because they at one point fully deleted my email as the recovery email, but then luckily AOL had the foresight to be like, okay, yogurt lover 264 or this phone number, and it would be my phone number. So then at this point, I was able to get all the recovery information sent to my phone, yada, yada, yada. You guys get the idea. They were trying to full on hack my mom's email but I didn't let them. After about an hour, I finally changed the email password. I removed all of their recovery information. And then I was just kind of like, I think I did it. No more new password requests, no other kind of activity. And I think I just burnt them out by sheer brute and being annoyingly relentless that they were kind of like, oh my God, fine, forget it. Like you have the email address, you know? Where I had a problem was, wouldn't you think AOL was like, hmm, You've tried changing your password 22 times in the past hour. We're gonna lock your account just for like a little bit. Or like, you'd, you'd think that they would kind of just have the foresight to be like, something, something fishy is going on here. Maybe we should look into this. No, they were just like, password change successful. Oh, again, password change successful. One more time, you got it. Password, password change, change successful. successful. The other thing that I was so confused about is I was like, why do you guys want my mom's email? Like what, you low on Bed Bath & Beyond coupons? <laughs> like literally all my mom had was probably receipts from the ottoman she just bought. Like there was nothing useful in my mom's email address. So I don't know why they were working so hard to take it. Um, but soon I learned why they wanted it. So the next morning I wake up and I'm just high off of my hacker skills and I check her email again and no suspicious activity. You know, all of the passwords had worked. They hadn't tried changing the recovery email. So I was like, cool, I think we did it. And I told my dad about it and he was just like, what do you mean? Like, how could they hack it? Like, what are you talking about? And I was like, just trust me, dad, it was really cool. You just don't understand, okay? <laughs> but so that was kind of the end of that. And I thought, you know, I had fixed it. But about a week later, I, again, I was living at home at this point, but I am a normal person and I have a cell phone, whereas my parents, they have a landline and an answering machine. We were all kind of standing around and my dad goes, you know what's weird? We haven't gotten any phone calls in a while. Now, again, they are the boomer generation, so they get a lot of spam callers, robo calls, you know, people saying vote for our mayor, as well, as well as just like family phone calls. But that was kind of suspicious that for a week they didn't receive any. So I was like, well, let me check. So on my cell phone, I call the house phone and it's ringing on my end, but the actual phone in the house doesn't ring. So my dad's like, oh man, like something happened with our, our phone service. Let me call AT&T to try to fix that. That's a, that's a landline phone service, right? Yeah. So he hops on the phone with AT&T and he's like, hey, crazy story. My phone's not receiving phone calls. What? What's going on? And AT&T says, oh, sir, yes, it's because, don't you remember, last week you changed the service to where all incoming phone calls to that phone number gets rerouted and forwarded to this new similar phone number. My dad's like, what are you talking about? And they said, yeah, you changed your service so that it was kind of like call forwarding to this new phone number. My dad's like, I did not do that. What are you talking about? They say, sir, you did this, like we got proof sort of thing. And he's like, what are you talking about? What ended up happening was that within my mother's email, I guess there was a lot more personal information than we originally assumed because AT&T was saying that they were able to provide, you know, the password, the maiden name of my mother, any kind of other personal information, addresses, phone numbers, a lot of information to verify that they were the ones making this request. So my dad's like, uh, no, no, like, I think we were hacked. Like, do you think it had something to do with our email? And AT&T was like, oh yeah, like 
if you think you got hacked, that probably could have been it. Okay, we'll cancel the call forwarding. No worries. Like, we just need to change up your verification information, like your two-step authenticator information. My dad's like, cool, let's do this. So again, I am always set up as the secondary person on all these accounts. So the AT&T person on the phone was like, okay, is your secondary account information JC? And he was like, yep, that's my daughter. And she says, okay, is her information still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And my dad's like, no, that's not her phone number. And they're like, hmm. Well, it looks like you changed it to that last week. And my dad's kind of exasperated, like, did we not, did we not just go over this? Like, that was clearly the hacker. That was the other person. And so they were like, oh, weird. Like, okay, like that shouldn't affect it at all. That's just kind of weird, but no big deal. We'll change it back. So they change it back to all of my information. They figured it all out with my dad's and the phone starts ringing off the hook with robo callers again. It was kind of nice having that break, you know, but we were just kind of like, dang, like they hacked into our phone. Why did they want our email to get into our phone? That's so weird. So naive, so naive because we, we weren't thinking ahead. We, this was all new to us, but here's where, here's what they did with that information. So we get off the phone and we're kind of thinking like, okay, what could they have done? So I check like kind of the sent emails from my mom's emails thinking maybe they tried to impersonate my mom and email family members for money, you know, or maybe they took my dad's phone number and tried to call family members for money. You know, that's kind of where my, my puny little brain was thinking, but they, they went bigger because then I was like, dad, maybe you should check your credit cards. Like my dad is very analog when it comes to that kind of stuff. He doesn't have like any kind of digital logins for his credit cards. He calls, he calls by the phone, he pays by the phone. If I have to talk to a human on the phone, I'm not doing it, but he, he does that. So he gets on the phone with his credit card and he was like, I'd like to check my balance. And I don't remember the number at the time, but the balance was a ton. And he was like, whoa, 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 tell me what those last purchases were. And sure enough, they were some outlandish spending that was definitely not him. So he was like, oh, okay, so that's that's what they were doing. They somehow took my credit cards. Now here's where it got crazy because then my dad was like, how did they, how did they do that? How did they steal my credit card? What had happened was they figured out my dad's credit card based on my mom's purchases through her email. When they made all of these outlandish purchases, the credit card company called the house phone to verify these purchases. So they called the house phone, which was being rerouted to their phone number. Now, that was only step one, because I guess they were like, this still seems kind of weird. We're gonna call the second person on your account. That's where they dialed JC for confirmation, and I wasn't the JC. They had changed the phone number to their own phone number. They called fake JC and was like, hey, just wanna confirm you're making all these purchases. And they were like, yes, it's Christmas time. I'm just spending a bunch on family gifts. It is I. And they were like, all right, that sounds good. So they had their two phone calls to these phone numbers confirming that it was their purchases. So nothing happened. So somebody was impersonating me to make all these purchases. Now, what is crazy is that my dad is on the phone with his credit card company going, Oh, oh no, we got hacked. Like none of those purchases were us. They play for my father a recording of a woman as me saying, hello, yes, I am JC and I approve these messages. I don't know why they'd be British, but there was a recording of a person trying to be me and they believed it. No, I sound way cooler on the phone than this lady. <laughs> So my dad just cancels the credit cards. He has to get all new one, update all of his information. I have to hop on the phone with a lot of these credit card people to verify who I am, give my verification information just as the secondary person on the account. It was a mess. But I think the funniest part about this whole thing was several weeks later, we got the final bill in the mail. And it was just so funny because <laughs> The amount that they spent using my dad's credit cards in one week was nearly $40,000. They went on a shopping spree for shoes, clothes, but the funniest part was that they were going to our local malls. They were going to places that we recognized. It said all of the locations of these places, and it was literally like we could have run into them. This was around Christmas time. I mean, what if we were behind them in line at the Nike outlet and 
two in a row they use the same credit card. Like that's nuts to me. So we knew they were local and in some way it felt sort of targeted. Like maybe, I don't know, I, I still don't know. I don't know the, the dynamics behind identity theft, believe it or not, but something about it just felt really eerie that it was so close to home and just just right there, you know? But $40,000, I mean, I, I feel like they kind of knew they had a time limit, especially with like this kind of stuff where your phone stopped ringing, that they knew their time with these credit cards was finite. So they just, they blew that money and they did a good job. Now afterwards, if you guys recall from my video where I talk about the Craigslist scam that I was almost scammed of, I wasn't scammed because I had big brains, because of that story, I had to put a fraud alert on all of my credit cards. Now this came in handy because sure enough, a few weeks later, I get an alert saying somebody is trying to open a bank account in your name. Yes, these scammers had obtained enough of my information to attempt to open a bank account, but they were unsuccessful because I am technologically proficient, just not word proficient apparently. <laughs> I am technologically proficient enough to know to set up lots of different verification processes and luckily I had this fraud alert that they were unsuccessful in setting up this bank account. But I just thought it was so crazy that even though they stole my dad's credit card, stole some of his identity, got away with it, that they then attempted to stay within the family and continue it, but no. Now, were they ever caught? Nope. Did we have to pay that $40,000 bill? No, but it did kind of ruin my dad's credit for a little bit, I remember. Like a lot of his credit limits were really thrown off. He couldn't actually spend on his credit card for a little bit because that charge wasn't just like, oh, $40,000 wasn't you? Sure, wiped clean, you know? There was a little bit of a process to it, but we eventually got it figured out. And the punchline to this story was, again, this was around Christmas time. On Christmas, I had asked for these thigh-high black boots and my mom had gotten them for me. And funny enough, I guess on the credit card bill was a pair of like thigh-high black boots. And so when I opened those up as a Christmas present, my dad goes, it was you. Nicely done. <laughs> uh, no, I did not, st I was not the one who stole my dad's credit card, but it was just kind of funny how I guess I guess great minds think alike. I'm not too far away from this scammer impersonating me after all. So that was the story of how my identity kind of got stolen, but my dad, he had his credit cards rampaged. But I also wanted to give one little snippet on the tail end of this video to kind of put it into more perspective for you guys in this digital age of some of the scams that are out there. So consider this just a little mini snippet story time afterwards. So recently this year, I got a Venmo request from my best friend and it said, hey, I just got a flat tire. Can you Venmo me 300 bucks? I'll explain later. I need to pay for this really quickly. Now, right away, I had alarm bells going off because I thought, why would my friend contact me? You know, he has a girlfriend, he has siblings, he has his parents. Why would he Venmo ask me for that information? So right away, I call him up and I say, hey, I just got this. And he interrupts me and he goes, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Ignore it, ignore it, report it if you can. So I was like, what the heck? So I give him some time to figure things out. He calls me back a half hour later and he says, look at who requested that transaction from you. It was his name, but it wasn't his username. So for example, it was his username is first name, last name, underscore. The username requesting me was first name, underscore, last name. It had also taken his photo as his profile photo. So it basically created a fake personal account from his Venmo. And what they did was they went to his recent transactions and kind of just shot in the dark, requested money from these people, hoping that it would work. And sure enough, it did because his girlfriend did in fact quickly send him those 300 bucks for assuming it was a flat tire and she was out of that money. Venmo still kind of new to this banking system and they did not help her at all. So I'm really grateful I didn't send them that money for, you know, a flat tire, but it was also kind of weird because I tried reporting that charge and they there was no way to even report it, you know? Like you I would have to call Venmo and be like, "Hey, this is a fraudulent kind of charge sort of thing." But by that point they had removed their request for money, I guess. And so it was already gone by that point. So my friend was out 300 bucks, even though she was just trying to help out her boyfriend. 
and Venmo didn't really do anything about it. So kind of use that as a cautionary tale. There are a lot of weird scams out there and you think you might be helping out a friend or family member, but you know, just be mindful of those usernames, those profiles, especially if it seems very urgent. You know, just make sure you're doing your due diligence to make sure that it is them asking for money. Because whenever it comes to money, don't just blindly send money to people. But also in the scope of this entire video, make sure that your passwords are strong, that you have two-step authentication set up, make sure that people aren't impersonating you on the phone and spending $40,000 at Victoria's Secret. Those are my three financial tips for you guys today. <laughs> um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. Hopefully it wasn't too dense and I kind of explained everything well enough. I'm not an expert in this topic at all, so I probably could have explained it totally wrong. But that was what happened from my perspective. So if you like this video, let me know in the comments below and let me know if you've been a victim of any kind of scams. You know those like crazy gift card scams that are coming up or how the IRS calls you and says you're being audited. Let me know if you've ever fallen for one of those. I'm kind of interested and to just kind of make sure that I can avoid them and avoid being a victim. But I thank you guys so, so much for watching this video and I will catch you in my next one. Toodles! $40,000 and you guys, they just bought shoes and clothes. Like they went on a shopping spree to Goldman Sachs. Gold, no, that's not right. Sachs on 8th Avenue, 4th, 4th Avenue, Sachs. Sachs on the Avenue. Sounds like my Saturday nights. I'm sorry, I'll stop. <laughs>